Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 53 of Teaching Tales, the podcast completely devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. I am once again Brent Coley, elementary school principal in beautiful Southern California. And it's been a what's been about a month since the last episode. Things have been very busy, but we're back with a new episode, and I am stoked to have joining me today, Eduardo Rivera. Eduardo, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. As I said, it's it's been. We were talking before we went live. It's this is a busy time of year. It is. And we are recording. What was today? November eighth. We are. This is a long stretch of the school year for any educator listening right now. You're nodding your head right yeah. now. Yeah. Yep. You know what we're talking about. So for the kids and the teachers, we're getting antsy. Exactly. It's not just the students. It's it's we love what we do. We do. But we're but. It's a long stretch, so I'm looking forward to a three-day weekend and, and uh, sleeping in here. But, Eduardo, for anyone who's not familiar with you and your work, just before we get started with sharing some stories, tell listeners, uh, tell my mom and dad and anyone else who's listening, <laughs> uh, who is Eduardo Rivera? Uh, so I am currently a integration technology specialist. I just refer myself as Tectosa out of the classroom. Uh, I taught for... Five years at my alma mater, uh, Cathedral City High School, and um, so kind of a local grown kid. Left, you know, kind of came back. Uh, now I'm five years in this position as a Tech Tosa, uh, and yeah, I've been, you know, love the community. Obviously, came back, and now I'm raising a family out in the community where I grew up in. Um, so yeah, teacher all around. Love the kids. Love the community. I think that is so cool. I was reading your on your website a little before we started uh, chatting, and and just the whole local boy. <laughs> like, I mean, you taught at the school you t- yeah. at, that you went to, that you graduated yeah. from. That is that is really cool. Yeah. I get the question all the time. Is, is you, you know, did you teach with the teachers that were your teachers, right? Are you And yes. And then you can't uncall them, right? By like Mr. Mr. Right. You just, you can. It's, it's just still too weird for me. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was nice. It was really good. And uh, they're just, they're so welcoming. And I think it, it, it gave me a little advantage, you know, being a first year teacher, knowing what it was like to grow up in that valley and then to to then ask the kids to do things i can say hey i sat in that exact same chair i know what it's like uh you know it's it gave me a little bit more cred right off the bat that's awesome that's awesome well i'm excited about uh kind of the topic for this episode you want to when we've kind of chatted in the months leading up to and we finally scheduled a time to do this which i'm i'm thrilled about you want to talk about gamification and um Video game. I mean, for anyone listening, I mean, unless we're if you've got kids, you know, video games <laughs> are a huge thing. I mean, I've got two kids. My son is an eighth grader, and he loves video games, and uh, that's not an uncommon thing. And you're gonna tell, you're gonna talk to us about and share some stories about how you're leveraging that for educational purposes. So, yes, what yeah, doing? so. So we're, you know, just a little bit for just video games and just kind of what they've meant to me. Um, like I said, growing up in this area, our area, I, we, Palm Springs, uh, always kind of gets looked at as this, uh, you know, really nice area. People come to Palm Springs, right? Uh, but I know it as a, the service industry where I grew up in, right? My mom worked very diff- very hard to, to maintain our livelihood here with uh, um, one of six siblings. And so... Well, let's just say I played a lot of video games when I was younger because it was kind of my, what I would call like a, looking back on it now, it was an escapism, right? It was a little bit of getting away from what was going on at home. And it was uh, it was something that essentially kept my attention for a really extended amount of time. Now, as I'm getting older, obviously the video games aren't as prevalent in my life as much as I would want it to be. Uh, but uh, now I get to kind of ex- re-experience some of the fun of playing video games with my kids. Uh, and so for me, it's it, it's really, it has that escapism. It's a little bit of that, but really there's there's some lessons that I didn't realize I was, uh, I was going through as I'm playing video games. Things that uh, if we had in the classroom would be super valuable, like the idea of never giving up and trying over and over again until you pass that level, Mm. right? If we could, uh, if we can kind of harness some of that and uh, trying over and over again until you achieve whatever academic goal you're trying to accomplish there. So, so for me, again, it's kind of a little bit of that, that escapism, but, but really there's, 
uh, there's a little bit of the, those lessons that I want to now share with my students or our district in this case. And so we've done a little bit of that with a couple programs. That is, gosh, I, you know, I ne I've never really thought about it like that until you until you just mentioned that. Just that whole, I mean, how many hours have you spent? Did I spend growing up? Has my son spent? And kids now, like you said, trying to pass that level. Yeah. And if you look, if you if we could measure the perseverance and the grit <laughs> that kids have in video games, gosh, if we could transfer that over into the classroom, yeah, how. How great would that be? Before before we move on, this is like a side note. I'm curious, what video games did you grow up playing? Um, so, there's there's a, so for me, it's the Zelda franchise. Anything Zelda related is just, you know, for some reason, it just something in my soul lights up when I see anything Zelda related. Uh, so it's like the first Zelda, and then um, then growing up, Ocarina of Time. That's like one of the best games of all time. And then obviously any anything on beyond that, anything Zelda has been like those are my that's my jam. All right. Yeah. I, what I, about you? What do you got? What's well, your? Uh... I've got a few years on you. So, like, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I remember, uh, any, I'm, I'm 47. So I, I remember, like, my first video was the Atari, the okay. Atari console. And I, I, I remember the day I got Asteroids on and <laughs> on my Atari. And, <laughs> like, and that was like, oh my gosh, yeah. Asteroids. So, um, yeah, it's video games have come a long way. When I watch yeah. my son on his Xbox and I just look at the graphics, I'm thinking, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> I, I grew up with Pong, right? Asteroids and Centipede, and it you're bit. yes, and, and you're you're. It looks like it's not even a television. It looks like you're in a, some real world. It's absolutely incredible. So yeah. So so. What exactly are you doing? Like, share share kind of the story of how how are you bringing that? Into so, so kind of so again, the idea of, of gamification, of playing video games, it, it's something that obviously I um, I enjoy. But but this idea was what what spawned what we called Chrome Warrior at the time, and it was our professional development for our teachers. And so that's uh, a Ludo now. Uh, at some at some point, it was called Chrome Warrior. Yep. Uh, that's kind of where where it began. We wanted to gamify this idea of professional development. We wanted the the badges, the points, the you know trying over and over again to to accomplish something just for the sake of accomplishing it, uh, not necessarily for pay. Because we do have some of that where a lot of our PD is you know how do we have, if you're going to do PD you have to pay. And so we wanted to create something autonomous where teachers wanted to do it and they wanted to do it on their own time and just for the sake of learning, for the sake of doing it. Uh, to get better at something uh, and so it initially started as as that that little gamified profession with the points and all that and then it kind of spawned into what we're for what we just released now is cyber champions which is that same platform with the same ideas of gamification and points and all that but our students are just it's so much easier to get them so with my teachers it's like hey like let's play this game you know like we have some points and we can there's some cool prizes if you play along with our kids we didn't even, well, no one ever had like a cyber champions uh, orientation. We put it out there and said, if you finish this game, you get free Wi-Fi on your phone, right? And mm. we had, and this is only for high school, we had 1,700 kids playing, just, wow. you know, at least logged into the game and played. I'm not going to say that everyone was, was playing the game all the way through, but had logged in, had started playing, doing some of the first set of levels. And so, you know, again, the points and the badges, all that stuff, I'm not sure how much of a, incentive that was maybe it really was just the free wi-fi but it was really neat to see them you know and we would they would send us uh what we do achievements it's like their proof that they're doing something they would send it to us we would look at it and would say all right that's kind of missed the mark on what we're asking and we'd give it back to them and then they would try it again <laughs> they would do it again and again until they back got it to, to work yeah. on mastery back to mastery yeah and you know it was for me it's it, and i've said this um before in, in other presentations it's like being out of the classroom, it was really neat to see some of those conversations, right? Like I got to have that interaction with them. And, you know, some some kids really got deep into, you know, what it's like to be a girl on the internet. It's, you know, it's not that fun because guys are always saying weird things, right? I had no idea that they would open to that level. So it started this discourse between us, us, my, me and my team, and then these students that were playing the game with, and they don't, they don't know who was grading their stuff. It was more, they just saw the that someone was responding to to what they were submitting. So what? So what kind of? I'm I'm intrigued by it, but my district uses a Ludo as well. Um, yes. 
for for staff development but but the fact that your your, your students are doing this what kind of games and uh, lessons for for lack of a better term what what so, were they doing like what were the the tasks the yeah yeah. Like, yeah so so we broke it up and th again this is this is we've kind of reiterated a little bit since the initial but when we first started uh, we had four sections that we were focusing on so cyberbullying is the first badge um, so we called it i think cyber bully proof cyber detective was our conversation about your digital footprint right putting that best foot forward mm -hmm. uh, with cyber detective was our can you identify fake news you know how do you know if something's a legitimate resource website and then um i was i always remember three out of the four and the last one i always forget about cyber uh, security um, mm -hmm. so that was just like password safety right who should you you know what's the difference between a white hat hacker and a black hat hacker what you know what are these conversations about the the safety of their information and things like that and so those are our four badges that we focused on and then we had a culminating task now or uh, an end of the road kind of thing but within each module we asked them to first was like consume so go go to Sprigio, which is our on anonymous um, mm -hmm you know, bullying reporting system that we have, take a screenshot of you actually getting to the website. Uh, then the reflection. So watch this video on, you know, this TED talk and we threw it in Ed Puzzle. take a screenshot of you completing it, answering the questions and submit it to us. So it's like a reflection piece after watching the video and then a culminating task. And the culminating task, this is where like the tech toast it is kind of goes in. We had them using, you know, like Adobe Spark or Screencastify, the tools that we would ask them to use in the classroom. And they would go ahead and, you know, show us their learning through whatever that medium was. And so every, all those four modules had all three of those components built into it uh, in order for to, um, to go on to the next level. Wow. And that's really cool. And you said there's 17, like you didn't, you did 1700 students when you just threw it out there. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe what we, what we did is we gave it to the principals and then we had like, so, you know, with the Ludo, they, they helped us kind of brand it a little bit. Yeah. We had these postcards and like we gave them to teachers uh, to hand out. I'm not sure how many of them got handed out, but it was just really an incentive for them just for them to just say, Hey, here it is. Here's the URL to it and then go. And kids, kids were playing kids were looking at it and trying to, trying to finish it. And yeah, it was, it was, it was really neat. Um, I still think there's always room for improvement and we're, we're reiterating because you know, we look back at the game and we wanted to add stuff. So this second iteration now we've added uh, for middle school, but we didn't want, we didn't want the middle school kids to finish the game and then get to high school and be like, oh, I just already did this. I, did I don't this. want to do it. Let's do it again. Uh, so we kind of took a, a different approach for middle school, still kind of the same, um, same categories, but we really focused on using Flipgrid because uh, after talking to someone from Common Sense Media, Sue Thoughts, who's uh -huh. like, she's mm -hmm. amazing and she she was like you know well how what are they like what are they really learning from doing these tasks and you know how are you facilitating the conversations and so we thought well let's use flipgrid for the conversation piece and we use the common sense media uh, digital dilemmas so you know you see a kid on instagram uh, the girls are rating themselves and you know what do you do in that scenario and so now we're essentially pulling, we're hoping that our teachers, and we just were just released it actually, the, the middle school version this this last week. So we're hoping that we can get teachers to, to moderate and have them be part of that conversation. So it is that back and forth between, and I, I'm hoping that's a little more powerful than it's just us responding back to them, but you know, teachers within the classroom yeah. that they see around, you know, listening to their, you know, their answer to all that, so. Well, gosh, ha having spent, I spent all of my teaching career at elementary. I'm now a principal in elementary, but I did spend two years as an assistant principal at the middle school level. And you, when you said we brought it down, I mean, it's obviously incredibly relevant at the high school level. <laughs> but yes. just those two years that I had at the middle school level, you mentioned like girls rating themselves on Instagram. I mean, gosh, I can't, I, I, I won't put a number on it, but the percentage of the issues that I dealt with that had to do with online activity whether it was inappropriate texts or i mean you mentioned the cyber bullying and just just doing things that just weren't that that kids don't really i i didn't think they don't know so yeah. stop, I, I applaud what you're doing here because and, and and doing it in a relevant way like you said like giving those those digital dilemmas like role play what would you yeah. do 
Yeah, this here's a scenario, right? Yeah. And uh, what I like about the digital dilemmas too on Common Sense Media is that they, they take a social emotional learning. So, you know, they cover like empathy. So, you know, how would you feel if you're in that scenario and you're the one being bullied, you know, use this lens. And so that's the questions that we put in Flipgrid are essentially the questions that the Common Sense Media would ask, but, you know, we were just facilitating it through the Flipgrid component. That's awesome. Yeah. Have, you, have you gotten any feedback, as you said, let me, 1700 logged on it doesn't necessarily mean 1700 have mm -hmm. finished everything, but have you gotten have you spoken with any students or received any feedback from students yeah so we did so at the end of the so the last task is is essentially like an essay which turned out to be a little bit more and i'm surprised that, that we even had kids finishing it i thought that was going to be too hard for them just because i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily write an essay i feel like that because that wasn't just the thing that i don't enjoy writing but I, or they would write these essays about you know what they learned on their journey. So that was the last part of the game is to tell us what they got from the cyber champion experience. And, and a lot of them were like, it just it all kind of opened my eyes. I didn't even think about those kind of things. Uh, you know, it was good to to, to revisit some of these things because I you know it, this is what it's like to be on the web, right? And so uh, I, that feedback has been good. I think uh, we can definitely learn a lot from from pulling more more of our students to figure out you know what was effective about the game, and I'm hoping with this next iteration we'll have a little bit more of that feedback and throw it into our end of the year survey that we do with our eighth grade kids, and so we'll see kind of what growth too because you know what what did that change even having them in this game does you know how, does it improve any actual skills yeah. for them kind of going forward? So yeah, there's there's a lot to that we're hoping. That'll be that'll be interesting. Like once, like you said, you've got some time with this in play to actually see. It, it, are you seeing a decrease in uh, online inappropriate activity, cyberbullying, stuff like that? Um, exactly. Yeah. That it will, and so so it is in a Ludo, I believe. So I would that would be awesome if you took a look at it and see you know what you thought of it's it's in there. So if you wanted to add it to your okay. your game, I think you can. Um, I'm pretty sure it's open. So for anyone, because we, you know, it took there was a uh, there was like a minute there when we were like, do we just keep this for ourselves or like what do we do with this? Yeah. You know, after we, because you know, there's a little sense of like, what, you know, do we want people looking at this game and telling us that it's not good or not? You know, but but as I'm learning, it's just just put it out there, you know, and kind of see what what people say and they take that feedback and make it better. Or, or this could be something that some district is just like, oh my gosh, I was about to recreate the wheel and you have already done it. I mean, one of the great things about this is, as, as I'm listening to you share the story of all of these students who, with the, with the only incentive was free Wi-Fi, and mm -hmm. that was pretty much it, right? Yeah. I mean, which, and when I say only, I mean, that's a big deal for, <laughs> for, for, for some, but I think that just goes to show that if we as teachers or administrators or TOSAs or whatever it, our position is, if we put learning in a format that is, I'll use the word cool. I mean, like when I was in the classroom, Tony Vincent, what my virtual mentor, I talked about him before, he, he showed me how to make iPod flashcards. It was just taking PowerPoint presentations. And this is back when iPods like, like thing, yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the tilt wheel or, or whatever it <laughs> was called. I mean, what, we would make flashcards and we would put those, and the kids would put them on their iPods. They're flashcards. Yeah. But because we put it in a format that was cool, in, in the kids, I, ooh, I get to study on my iPod. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And you're taking something like cyberbullying, cyber detective, cyber citizenship, things like that, but you're putting in something that's relevant for kids they're doing this on their own not be because they have to per se but because hey this might actually be yeah. fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean and part of it too we, we were our teachers are always impact there's so many things that they're um having to do right you know yeah. make sure you're you're taking this assessment you're doing this short cycle and that's part of why we wanted it to be kind of an autonomous thing where the kids take ownership of it because we don't want teachers to have to if they wanted to you know if they wanted to take our course and like have the kids run through it that'd be awesome but but they don't have to right they don't have to be actively saying play this game do this yeah. task i almost feel like that would actually probably be detrimental right once we told the kids that they had to then sure. it might be the, the opposite of, of what we want them to do 
Well, we've, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, our district has started using a Ludo and we're, I'm, I'm in the Murrieta Valley Unified School District and they've called it the Valley of the Lost Gems and we've they've taken like a Indiana Jones theme. theme. Yeah, I love that one. And it's been really cool because it's it hasn't been for the students, it's been for the for teachers and for, for staff members and, and they've got, the, and they're constantly adding to it, but it's like, oh, you want to learn how to use Excel? You want to learn how to use Flipgrid? You want to learn whatever it is, and they can self-pace, but the, it's not the type of thing that they've told teachers you must. must. Exactly. Do. Yeah. But for those for those out there who are looking for it, and like, gosh, I, I really, I don't know how to use a spreadsheet. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know how to do this, but I've heard that there's cool things you can do with it. How do I... There's now something for them to do, and they and the district has offered some incentives. Free Wi-Fi is not going to be enough for uh, staff, <laughs> but, uh, but but they've done. I mean, they've got T-shirts, and mm -hmm. I want to say I'm pretty sure, like if they get to a certain level, I mean, they've got some some decent prizes, yeah. prizes for for people, which is well, my, I know one of one of my teachers, um, sh she's done multiple levels uh, completely on her own, and I haven't yeah. pushed that. She's just just, she just went, one of my teachers is like, I just want to beat this one person. <laughs> like that's, yeah. That was her incentive. You know, I just, I want to get ahead of this one person. It's like, okay. know, competition, competition leads to uh, yeah. improvement. Well, okay. That, but that's, that takes us back to the gamification, right? Playing video games, that, that sense of competitiveness, right? You know, not only beating your own high score, right? Why do we keep, a, you have the high score, why, why, why not stop playing, right? You want to better yourself or if there's a there's a component of being able to compete against someone else then that's even more so you're okay then i'm now i'm really motivated because I'm, I'm not gonna let this person one up me this is the thing with with my kids so we so i play fortnite with my children right and my son is i, I don't know how he got super cocky but he's for some reason he he claims to be better than ninja right and so so then i there's a sense of like what's that that's a pretty. That's pretty big. Point. Yeah. No, he, but he's not. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, you know, I try to bring him down, back down to earth a little bit. But there's, there is a sense of even just between both of us, you know, just to like, hey, you're getting better. I want to get better too, right? I want to get to where you're at, Dad. Uh, and so, you know, having that sense of competition, you know, playing, playing even this game that maybe it's not going to make me better in life, but why, why do I want to get better at this game? Right. And it's just that that autonomy that it's hard to instill. And sometimes it does feel contrived because you feel like I'm, I'm putting a, a boring task into a, a gamified component. But at times that's that's as good as it's going to get sometimes like that's that's worth it just if they're even going to do it on their own. Well, and I I mean, I, I think I think you just hit it on the head. It's like taking the quote unquote the boring task if you can put it in a format. I mean, because I'm thinking, OK, so what takeaway if, if I'm a teacher listening to this? And I don't have a Ludo, or I don't have some online platform like this. What could I do? And I think I talked about this in a previous episode many, many, many ones ago. But I used to review vocabulary words. I mean, at, toward the end of the year, we and I just came up with a game. I called it Define It. So these are like a hundred vocabulary words that that we had learned throughout the year in various contexts, whether it was social studies, language arts, all that kind of stuff. Teaching fifth grade. And I and I just took those 100 words, put them on a index card, and and taped them on the board to make a 10 by 10 grid. So you so so picture a 10 by almost like a multiplication, like a hundred square. Like a Jeopardy board. Exactly. So there's it's a 10 by 10 grid with a hundred vocabulary words, and I numbered those. So one through a hundred. I had two 10 sided dice. I had them put into teams, and every morning we would take about five minutes. And we would review those words by, okay, team one, here's two dice. Here's two 10-sided dice. Roll them. So they roll a six and a seven. So, that, okay, that's 67. Vocabulary word number 67. And then I would, we would randomly pull somebody from their team. All right, Billy, what's that 67 is? Whatever the word is, what does that mean? And if they could define it without any help, they got a point. If they could then put it in a sentence, they got a second point. If they didn't know how to define it, I'd give them the sentence. Then they could try to get the words from context clues. Yeah. They couldn't get that either. We went to another table. So everyone was paying attention because you had a chance to steal that point if the first team <laughs> didn't get it. Yeah. yeah. And they loved it. And then I would throw in things like today, boys and girls, 
odd numbers are worth double points. Double the points. Oh, my gosh. And and, and factors of nine are worth triple points. And things. So, so yeah. they're going, oh, my gosh, we got a factor. Of <laughs> I was taking vocabulary words yeah. in something that many would consider to be boring. boring. And I had kids, like, cheering to do that. And that was just, it wasn't, and there's no tech. I mean, two 10-sided dice and 100 index cards is all it was. But it was an attempt, at least, to take something boring and put it in a format that was, like you said, the competitiveness and things like that. And you were able to, okay, this team is really behind, so it's now worth five. I mean, you could <laughs> take the game. To, to yeah, you don't want anyone to get too far behind. Yeah, you yeah. Can help certain people. Like, that's, that's part uh, of the gamification. Uh, like, do you, right? Like, you're... When you're playing these games, at least like a real video game, there yeah. there are hints, right? There's there's way, context clues, like you just like with your vocab. There's mm -hmm. ways to to get it, skills based off of just trying a different strategy, or here's this hint that'll take me down this other path. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to be gleaned, and I mean, you look at uh, things like Kahoot right now, right? right? Where they're just super popular. You look at that community of people making games within Kahoot. It's it's massive, right? Is playing games in the classroom, but then there's a lot, and you know, just the whole idea of, of just gamification has has a place. Not not that you do it every day, right? It's not something that, that you have to do every day, but there's there's definitely some some skills that we can you know take from the, the games. Absolutely, and like you said, just even when you quote unquote won the game, can you better your time? Can yeah. you can you can you beat your your personal record? So. So, well, gosh, Eduardo, that's that's really cool. I'm 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 gonna check out. I'm gonna go on and see if if it is open, and I'm gonna check out that uh, thing because that's something that I could uh, pass on to some of the people in my district as well. So, yeah, I I totally appreciate you coming on. And for anyone who is interested in following your work, uh, where can someone go online and find? <laughs> So my website that I use is edtecheddy.com. So you can visit there or and just at, at edtecheddy on Twitter. I try to post relevant stuff usually, but a lot of times it's just retweeting Google. <laughs> just, it's been so good. I just, you just jump on that Google train and just follow what they're doing. There's some awesome. good stuff there. Yeah, you've got some good resources on your website. So uh, yeah, edtecheddy.com. And, and it's the same Twitter handle you said? Yep, edtecheddy. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Well, sir, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing uh, good stuff. Hopefully, people who are listening uh, would be encouraged to maybe take that that lesson or that concept or the thing that, that kind of makes the students sometimes roll their eyes like, oh, boy, here we go. Is there a way to spice that up? Is there a way to gamify that? Is there a way to um, put it in a format that would actually make them excited about that? So. Um, Eduardo, thank you so much. Totally appreciate it. And thank you so much, man. You appreciate got it. it. You got it. Thank you. And for everyone listening, thank you. Sorry it's been about a month since our last episode, but we're back. And I've got a few other one, a few other uh, guests that we're, we're trying to line up. So it will not be another month before we have another episode. Um, I was going to say I promise, but you know what? Stuff happens. So I'm not promising, but <laughs> the goal is not, it will not be another month. Um, and it, it, as always, if you if you want to listen to some previous episodes, you can go to brentcoley.com on the podcast page. If you haven't subscribed, go to iTunes, Google Play. We're in Spotify as well. You can subscribe and listen there. If you like what you hear, I would appreciate it if you would drop a review. Once again, that's not about ego or anything like that. But the better if you've got more reviews, it helps uh, it, it be more visible to other listeners to get the word out. So. Once again, Eduardo, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh-huh. Everyone, thank you for listening. And until next time, have a good one. <laughs>